Good morning, all of you. Myself, Dr. Gayatri Nandukumar Patil, uh, Assistant Professor, Rasa Shastra and Varshadya Kattana Department. Uh, Rasa Shastra Department welcome, uh, welcomes all honorable uh, dignitaries, delegates, respected teachers, scholars, and students. On behalf of Lokaniti Rajaram Bapu Patil, Ayurved Medical College, Hospital, PG Institute, and Research Center, Istanbul. Department of Rasasastra and Venshiki Kalpana is honored to arrange the national webinar on guidance on preclinical animal studies with special reference to Ayurvedic formulation. I request Dr. Pramodini Patil, Madam, HOD, and Professor Rasasastra and Venshiki Kalpana Department to view preface of today's webinar. Good morning all. Department of Prashasta and Vishwanya Kalpana, Lok Nitya Raja Ramakathi Patil Ayurvedic Medical College, Istanbul, is honored to arrange a national webinar on guidance on preclinical animal studies with special reference to Ayurvedic formulations. On behalf of our institute, I heartily welcome today's eminent faculties. First of all, our first speaker, Dr. Madhukar Sevada, sir, Professor and Vice Principal, Department of Research and Mission in Uttaranchal Ayurvedic College, Uttarakhand. And our second eminent speaker is Dr. Sandeep Pati, sir, Professor and HOD in the Department of Pharmacology, Dr. Shivaji Rakhudam College of Pharmacy, Cosmetic Research. And also, he is the Director of Bioset Institute of Research and Development. I welcome our Dean, Dr. Miran Minkere, sir, our BG Director, Dr. Pramod Manav, sir, PhD Director, Dr. Ajit Patil, sir, and Director, BSM, Dr. Uh, Mr. Sandeep Adal, sir. I also welcome all the respected faculties, all PG and UG students. This webinar is arranged to give our knowledge on a very interesting topic regarding Pre-clinical animal studies, which is very much useful, especially for the PG student. Animal pre-clinical studies of drug efficacy are an important resource for designing and performing clinical trials. They provide evidence of drug potential, clinical utility, inform the design of trials, and establish the ethical basis for testing drugs in human. So, it is very much important to know about ethics related to animal study, laws and regulation for animal use, selection of different animal in different models, how to convert human dose to animal dose, and the most important thing is what type of test should be done as for different diseases like anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, protective, etc. So, to enhance light on this issue, today we are going to conduct this webinar. So, I hope this will be helpful for all of you. So, I today the main two eminent speakers will guide us on the topic of this related to this. Thank you very much. Now, let's move on. Now, let's move on towards the first session of today's webinar. I request Dr. Shitan Raskar, Madam, Associate Professor, Rasa Shastra and Banshishya Kalpana Department to introduce our first guest speaker. Good morning, all of you. Uh, myself, Dr. Shitan Raskar, Associate Professor, LRP Ayurved Medical College, Islampur. It's my honor to introduce our first eminent speaker, Dr. Madhuka Shivale, sir. Sir is currently working as a vice principal and professor and HOD, Department of Prasashastra and Vaishwaja Kalpana, Uttaranchal Ayurvedic College, Rajpur, Dehradun, Uttarakhand. He has completed his BMS and MD in Rasashastra and Vaishwaja Kalpana from KLE BMK Ayurved Medical College, Belgaum, Karnataka. Sir is pursuing his PhD from Karul Institute of Ayurveda and research center, Vadodhra, Gujarat. His teaching experience is 16 years. Sir worked as a PG guide, PG teacher, and PG examiner. He worked as a pharmacy in charge. Sir is working in research department of Uttarancha Ayurvedic College, Rajput, Dehradun, Uttarakhand. Sir has published various research articles. 
sir has been honored with institutional awards. I would like to invite Dr. Madhukar Shivade sir on this platform as the speaker of our first session. The topic name is Ethics related to preclinical animal studies. Welcome, sir. तो शेवाई सर, तो शेयर योर स्क्रीन सर प्लीज तर तुम आवाज ये नहीं तर आवाज येत नाही तुमचा हेलो सर सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल प्लीज संदीप पटेल सर हेलो हाय ते मजाल यस सर सरना मना पिन कारण पर कनेक्ट करना सांगा ओके ऑडियो ऑडियो पिन ऑडियो जैक पिन तेने सिलेक्ट केले नाही तुम्ही ऑडियो डॉक्टर शेवाय सर तुमचा आवाज येत नाहीये सर नाहीये सर तुमचा आवाज येत नाहीये
डॉक्टर शेवाळ सर आवाज येत नाही सर तुमचा सर तुम्ही पुन्हा एकदा बाहेर पडून पुन्हा आत येत आहे का लॉग इन करते का जॉईन होत आहे का
सर संदीप पटेल सर हेलो हाँ सर सॉरी फॉर द इंटरप्शन देर आर सम टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम सो वी विल स्टार्ट अवर नेक्स्ट सेशन मूविंग ऑन टूवर्ड्स द नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑफ टूडेज वेबिनार Uh, I would like to invite Dr. Nolan Patil, Madam, Associate Professor, Rasa Shastra and Bhushan Kalpana Department, to introduce our next speaker. It's my honor to introduce our second eminent speaker, Dr. Sandeep Patil, sir. Sir is an MBA PhD from Shivaji University and currently working as professor and HOD of Pharmacology Department at Shivaji Rao Kadam College of Pharmacy, Kasvai Digaraj, Sangli, Maharashtra. Sir has also completed diploma course in Intellectual Property Right, Research Methodology, and Aromatherapy. Sir has published many research articles nationally and internationally in the field of pharmacy as well as Ayurveda. Sir has also won many medals in his research work, like in Avishkar and international conference in Thailand, and many more. Sir won three patents in the field of pharmacy. Sir guided as a resource person in many workshops, seminars, and webinars. Sir is a guide of six PhD scholars from Shivaji University and one from University of Malaysia. Sir has special uh, Sir has special interest in the field of Ayurveda. He established a, a lab for animal studies, namely Bios Biosite Institute of Research and Development, that is Bird in Sangli, Maharashtra. He worked on many researches of Ayurveda medicine, especially for their animal studies. It is our privilege that we have such a multi-talented and multi-tasker person as a speaker for today's webinar. Before taking too much time, I would like to invite our second speaker, Dr. Sandeep Patil, for his guidance. Thank you, thank you very much for your kind words. So today I will share and thank you very much to the management and Pramodini Sahuli Madam for giving such a wonderful opportunity to me to represent myself in front of you regarding to the various pharmacological and in vitro in vivo activities. So just a minute I share the slides. Uh, are you visible the slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are here. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I worked in animal studies from 2004. Last 20 years, I worked for various animal models and all these things. So, in 2015, I have started one uh, small unit uh, regarding about the in vitro activities. And after completion of uh, in vitro activities, then I started to work on the in vivo activities. Previously, I worked uh, as an assistant professor in Upper Saibunai College of Pharmacy, uh, 2006 to 2016. Then as an associate professor in Adarsh College of Pharmacy, Vita. And then I joined as a professor in uh, Dr. Shivajaro Kadam College of Pharmacy, uh, Kasvi Digrat, uh, in PG department, pharmacology department. So from last eight years, uh, I worked towards the various models, uh, developed the models, and uh, I guided to the various students. Uh, recently, one good news is that around 148 PhD students uh, worked in our laboratory from uh, not only in India, 
it is also from the abroad country uh, then one more this is our small laboratories where we work the various in vitro as well as in vivo activities with the sangli uh, then in the 2019 at that time flooded area is of course at that time uh, with the help of the ayurvedic physician we have prepared the one uh, uh, formulation that is a dish and dashang dhup uh, which is helpful to cure the bacterial growth or uh, fungal growth so that biological activity is performed in our laboratory and that product is marketed by the sri pharma uh, and that is a very useful drug and i thanks to the dr mahesh jangam uh, who has given a good uh, guidance to how to prepare the this dish and do so at that time i realized that there are so many papers i have published in more than 100 papers but the applicability is a uh, uh, is less occurs Uh, towards the society so there is a i just target to that to work on such a thing that should be helpful for the society and again i have started to work on the various models that are useful to the society so in 2019 i have uh, applied for the registration of cpcca right now it is called as a ccca in 2020 i got a permission for the research for commercial purpose on the small animals and under this i have performed various uh, activities uh, from the various ayurvedic college and uh, basic sciences colleges then pharmacy colleges uh, for the various pharmacological activities and i learn lots of things and your students can also join uh, to the laboratory to learn all the methods and all these things in lockdown period Uh, our lab has uh, submitted one small project uh, towards the national research development corporation under the techno commercial and that was a novel carbon nano tube based hand sanitizer because at that time there are so many people always use the sanitizer continuously and that harasses their skin that creates the problems on their skin so we have decided to prepare the herbal based carbon nano tube uh, hand sanitizer and hand wash gel and we completed this project in one year and submitted all the documents to the uh, national research development corporation so with this basic information let's we starts to our the uh, main point related towards the uh, animal studies okay so uh, when we use the animals most of the time we perform the activities on the uh, rat mice rabbit and all these things but students are unaware about the Uh, validation of that model. Okay, so today we discuss the various animals, their purpose of the uh, use in a various uh, uh, what we say that is the various models. Then we discuss on the toxic study. Then we discuss on the uh, how human dose convert into the animal. Okay, then we discuss on the uh, uh, anesthetic methods. Then we discuss on the euthanasia, how animals are painlessly killed. after completion of the project or what will be the next things that we cover okay so let's start the discussion about the various studies so for that purpose just i close my videos there is a if it is a not it i will i am not concerned about that are you able to hear my voice yes yes sir Yes, sir. Please continue. Okay. So first and most important in the preclinical study that is uh, the selection of animal models. So why we are select the animal models in rat and mice and all these things? So basically, these animals are phylogenetically closer to the man. So that's why we are using the various animals like as the rat and mice. so again one more important thing when we choose our model at that time which animal is suitable to our study that is also most important so use of the animal in which process under investigation that is also close uh, close for uh, as close as possible so investigation is the mostly carried out uh, regarding to the way our drug whether that drug is performed the various activities or not that's why so in the selection of animals 
the experimental animals are usually if we hear various that is the under the category of the rodent that is the mouse rat guinea pigs jabril's hamster so these are the animals which comes under the class that is the rodents and non rodents that is the rabbit dog cat monkey pig so here the guinea pig is a different and this pig is a another different pig and in miscellaneous in which frog recently it is a banned to perform the research activity frog pigeon even zebra fish even chicken can also be used for the various uh, biology uh, pharmacological activity okay so first we see one by one about these animals and they are used in a various uh, study okay so first we study the mouse mouse is a very small animals and most of the times in pharmacological study this mouse is a prefer so it is also called as a mus musculus it is a very smallish laboratory animals and it is a very easy to keep handle and require small place for housing with formally bred so whatever the mouse is available in the uh, in that purpose there are various swiss albino mice is there even that there is a sprague uh, bulb c mice is there so there are different strains are available but among this strain swiss albino mice is a very common user so first question is arise that what is the albino albino means nothing but that is the white color so white color mice we prefer so that's why uh, it is called as a albino mice and albino mice are very very sensitive to the small doses of the drug just one example if you provide the ptj ptj is nothing but that is a pentylene tetrazole so pentylene tetrazole is a mostly used chemical for the conversion process pentyl type of conversions so within a 1 minute or 2 minutes you will see the conversions in the animals so these animals are very very sensitive to the small doses of the animals so they have similar reproductive and nervous system to human and suffer from same diseases such as the cancer diabetes or even that anxiety also so mouse is the most preferable for the various studies like at the cancer studies diabetes studies and even the anxiety so in anxiety we have performed the various models in the laboratory later we will see which models are there which models for the diabetes okay so the mouse is a advantage is because it is a uh, short gestation period it is around the 19 to 21 days after 19 to 21 days uh, uh, you will get the litter size and it is a small in size then life span of that mouse is around the 1.5 to 2.5 year and it is a low cost maintenance the cost is around the mice is a 150 rupees and uh, rat for 300 rupees so in between the cost wise mice is a preferable <clears throat> so in which condition which in which studies the these mice is a preferable in which first that is the toxicological study so whenever any compound any ayurvedic compounds that we have to check the toxicity okay whether that can produces any toxic effect on the mice or rat that for that purpose mice are preferable later we will see the various guidelines are used for the uh, toxicity study then teratogenicity study after the uh, disasters occurs with the thalidomide uh, there is absence of limbs occurs in the babies so from that onwards teratogenic study is mostly carried out in the animals so animals have given the drugs and check whether the drugs have produces any abnormality in the pups or not okay then bioassay of insulin screening of analgesic and anti conversion drugs screening of chemotherapeutic agents even that genetics and cancer research so here in the genetic or cancer research neuter mice are mostly preferred to knock down of the t cells in the mice hairless mice and that mice is specially used for the genetic studies or cancer study okay next animal that we are always see commonly used in the laboratories that is the rat it is called as a rattus norwegicus it is a very small size and greater sensitivity to the most drug it is a sturdy we can handle the animals very well uh, in the laboratory level and we can perform the various experiments under the anesthesia in the rat 
so in between the difference between the rat and mice only the size is the different and mice is a very small size and a very uh, sensitive to the various drugs as compared to the rat so in experimental purpose the rats are mostly preferable for the analgesics and anti convulsant activity later we will see the analgesic activity and anti convulsant activity how it performed in the laboratory level but in the study of postural cycle there are four days postural cycle is there then mating behavior for the aprodeic activity then lactation even gastric acid secretion that is anti ulcer activity then hepatotoxic study by using the various chemicals paracetamol carbon tetrachloride for that purpose also rats are mostly preferable after uh, bioassay in the bioassay insulin oxytocin vasopressin various hormones we can check in the uh, rat by taking the blood sample and analysis whether hormones are increased or decreases or what kind of effect of that hormones that we check on the rat even toxicology study even rat brain tissue is employed in the radio receptor ligand studies recently uh, i share the uh, stereotaxic apparatus stereotaxic apparatus that apparatus which is uh, just like as a ball in which you have to place the animal a glass a big ball and under there is the husk is there and you have to make a surgery on the animals on the skull you have to make a small uh, drills uh, and put the rods and connect the rods with the software and you will get the what happens inside the brain that can be checked and for that purpose uh, rats are preferred but interesting thing is that rats do not omit rat do not omit why because of the due to the strong sphincters uh, between the stomachs and esophagus and lack of omitting center so anti emetic activity anti emetic omitting activity cannot be performed on the rat let us see the which animal is suitable to check the anti emetic activity okay so even that rat do not have a tonsil and gall bladder even diffuse pancreas so it is not a good model for the type 1 diabetes studies even sometimes coprophagy is occurs with the uh, uh, rat because most of the times we fast the animals we fasting the animals for the 18 hours so at that times these rats can eat their own stool so take care of that when you perform the experiment at that time tail help in the thermoregulation to check the proper temperature of the animal okay so the rats are used in a research of behavior pharmacology physiology neurosciences immunogenetics transplantation cancer risk assessment cardiovascular diseases and ag okay even that after the death of the animal when you dissect the animals at that time you have to remove the uh, ileum part we have to remove the intestine we have to remove the stomach and uh, you have to remove the uterus rat uterus and check whether your compound has any contactability or not even you have to remove the ileum and check the effect of the acetylcholine atropine effect on that ileum even that you have to take the small part of the stomach that is called as the fundus strip and check whether your compound has shown any effect on the fundus strip or not then was a difference then anopocytal muscle so various uh, smooth muscles as well as a, a skeletal muscle <coughs> smooth muscles can be removed and check whether the drug have any contractility so their largest use of the drugs to check for that purpose mice and rats are most preferable next animals you have seen in the picture that is a guinea pig it is a cavia porcellus <clears throat> so guinea pig it is a very small <coughs> very small animal it is a herbivorous and which eats the green fruits and seeds and roots guinea pig are not able to synthesize the required daily vitamin c so that is a peculiarity of this guinea pig even that guinea pig is highly sensitive to histamine so all of you know histamine is a play most important role in the asthma condition so at that time such a model can be used to check the guinea pig in that condition 
Okay, so guinevere can be used as a vaccine to check the vaccines for the diphtheria, TB, then hypersensitivity studies, anaphylactic shock. Even that uh, histamine causes the constriction of the bronchi muscle. So evaluation of the bronchodilator, any Ayurvedic preparation, if you say that this is the bronchodilator, so that can be checked on the guinevere. Even that look evaluation of local anesthetics, then. After terminal portion, after killing of that gunepi, uh, the ileum part means intestinal part that can be used to screen the spasmodic and antispasmodic activity. Even that, just we see that there is the gunepi is not gunepi are not able to synthesize the required daily vitamin C. So similarly, so ascorbic acid metabolism can be checked also in the gunepi. So various parts of the uh, uh, ileum part that can be used to the spasmodic. So spasmodic is nothing but that is a constriction of the intestinal muscle. Once constriction of the intestine is occur, so what happens at that time there is a pain arises. Okay. So relaxation of the intestinal muscle is the most important. So that can be checked in vitro, not using the animal just take the ileum part of that animal and ideally you can perform this activity in vitro by using the different instrument even that this ideal model <coughs> for the amoebiasis <coughs> amoebiasis immune response anaphylactic shock encephalomyelitis tuberculosis and ascorbic acid method okay so one interesting thing if you walk more, uh, if you walk more fast near to the guinea pig, what happens? There is a sudden cardiac arrest may be occurs to this animal. It is a very docile and a very sensitive animal. So keep in a noise-free area. Always these precautions is the most important. Jebri. <clears throat> it is a have length between the rat and mice. It is also called as a sand rat. Okay, we have not used such animals in our laboratory, but uh, in a big, big laboratories uh, in, in that area, these gerbils are used. It is easy to handling, mild, quiet signatures, and it is used in the research of a stroke epilepsy. And especially, this animal is used for the auditory study. Gerbil is used for the auditory study. So, here in curves, it is a similar to the human. That's why this animal is mostly preferred for the auditory study. Parasites and bacterial infections, lipid metabolism, heart diseases that can be also carried out in the in these animals. Afterwards, one more animal is the mostly preferred in the pharmacological studies that was uh, hamsters. Okay, so hamster it is a third commonly used laboratory animals in all over the world. There are two specific species available in which one is a golden or Syrian hamster and second one that is a Chinese hamster. So golden and Chinese hamster, these two species are commonly used for the various pharmacological activities. Okay, so which activities are mostly preferred in the hamster? That is the virus. So after COVID, so maximum work is carried out on the viruses and that virus is preferred the hamsters are mostly preferred to check whether the what kind of the effect of that virus is occurs. Even that, this animal is the mostly useful for the smoke inhalation study. Smoke inhalation study. That is the tobacco produces the smoke. Even tobacco in the sense the cuff in the animal and whether you are compound as an anti uh, cuff or anti tissue property that can be checked in these animals. Okay. So, various uh, biomedical researches, then cytogenesis researches, for that purpose, this animal is the mostly preferred. And it is a, a more susceptibility to the studying of the meiosis and mitosis purpose. Okay. Next one, it is a commonly used in the laboratory, that is the rabbit. It is the oracrolagrus cuniculus. It is a very docile animal, and mostly we prefer this animal for the chick. Uh, Toxicity study of the compound, then pyrogen testing, uh, then various large volume parenterals that is a uh, saline, normal saline, 
that can be checked whether they have produced any pyrogen on the uh, on the animal that can be performed even that biopsy of insulin anti diabetic and curare mimetic drug curare mimetic means previously uh, in the hunting of any animal uh, at that time they used the poison and once this that poison which is a uh, placed on the arrows and the animal is immediately paralyzed or the skeletal muscle relaxation so that kind of drug is also checked on the rabbit okay so here we are using the species that is a new zealand white rabbit that are used for the diabetes tuberculosis cancer heart disease even that these are mostly preferable for the anti fertility drug for the teratogenic and uh, sorry anti fertility drug and for teratogenic study but the cost is a high and the study cost is a, uh, more for the rabbit so uh, in alternative purpose we are using the rat and mice instead of the rabbit but skin is a very sensitive that's why most of the times iridancy test is used to check uh, check on the rabbit okay after killing isolated heart duodenum ileum preparation that can be also used for the testing of a drug nowadays in cosmetics industry or pharmaceuticals they check whether that cosmetics have produces any toxic effect or not for that purpose rabbits are mostly preferable so okay it is a very sensitive to the histamine and it cannot be omitted that are the particular uh, uh, peculiarities of that animals okay so in the cosmetic industries the rabbits are commonly used and the test is called as a dress test so dress test which gives whether that compound have any uh, that compound have any produces irritation redness or not that can be checked by using the rabbit so we here we have just checked the various animals and uh, their uses in the pharmacy uh, in the uh, pre in the preclinical research so here there is a biological and physiological data that can be correlate with the uh, in the what we say that is the, in the human study okay so here we have used the uh, commonly that is the mouse rat guinea pig and rabbit okay so here there is a physiological data is given so one interesting thing you have to see that is the heart rate so heart rate is a 350 to 300 250 that are uh, per minute occurs in these animals and blood pressure is a 130 113 and 18 systolic and diastolic so blood for the blood pressure studies these animals are most preferably to, to check any anti hypertensive compounds uh on that animals okay so liter size is a 6 to 12 of a mouse and 8 to 10 for the rabbit after delivery uh, this liter size is occurs number of uh, liters is occurs eight at a time for a mouse for a rat six liters are occur okay next animal is a monkey basically it is used in the cdri and lucknow uh, then biggest laboratory in all over the world monkeys and uh, where uh, various psychopharmacological studies are mostly carried out in that uh, uh, monkeys their uterus which resembles the human and exhibiting regular menstrual periods that's why some such kind of study is carried out in the monkeys most of the time these are ideal method for the pharmacokinetic study in the pharmacokinetic study ADME is the most important absorption distribution metabolism and elimination so we draw the blood sample and check on the hplc whether that compound has proper absorption distribution or not okay even that these monkeys are mostly preferable for the cns cvs gid and fertility for that purpose even that vaccine can be also checked uh, on this uh, uh, what we say the on the monkeys even that dog is also preferably in the biggest laboratory large animals okay so in that dog uh, as per my knowledge these dog dogs are uh, used for to check the blood pressure okay and anti ulcer activity whether your compound has shown the anti ulcer property or not for that purpose dogs previously in last previous time dogs are mostly 
prefer even anti arithmetic cardiovascular autonomic drug that can be also check on this uh, dog so basically there are different species of the drugs are available but beagle and mongrel these are two dog are preferred for the experiment purposes due to the manageable size moderate length of hair coat docile in nature and easy to handle okay and stomach and intestinal tract which is a resemble resemble similar to the human okay and these models these dogs are most preferred for the diabetes mellitus reproduction ulcerative colitis okay and different part that is the cns activities also as well as anti ulcer property cat cat is also felis catus it is a biological name uh, of that cat and that is used for the cardiovascular behavioral uh, and biomedical research you have to just uh, palpate the uh, cat and you have to see the there is the uh, heartbeat and that's why these are the one of the peculiarities of the cardiovascular system and most of them is the nictitating membrane nictitating membrane and the ganglionic drug that can be specially checked in the cat so cat is the most useful model for the studying of the transmission of vitamins minerals to the fetus and newborn even that it is also used for the oncology neuropharmacology and toxicology here pig just previously we have seen that is a guinea pig that is a very small animal and pig here is a another big guest and that pig is a mostly preferable for to check the uh, bronchitis and pneumonia kind of study so here alimentary tract is this resembles to the human and this can be used to check the atherosclerosis myocardial infarction that is heart attack cardiovascular diseases that can be preferred this, this pigs are prefer so pig cat dog these are the large animals that are uh, take the special permission from the ccca and perform in the biggest laboratory with the care of all these next one uh, animal that is uh, recently uh, we have developed the model on the zebra fish in the college that is all known as a danio rivio it is one of the uh, one of the best model to check the uh, various uh, activities in the zebra fish like as the alzheimer disease congenital heart disease polycystic kidney disease cancer and even that development of the nervous system so in the alzheimer disease in our college we have developed this model uh, for the alzheimer disease by using the scopolamine induced amnesia okay so we have given the orally this uh, drug to the animal uh, sorry fish and we have to check the neuro behavioral pattern of the uh, zebra fish and to check whether your compound has produces uh, that uh, scopolamine have produces amnesia or not and afterwards we have taken the uh, ashtakwarg plant uh, such a plants which is rarely we have procured from the uh, himalaya uh, by the vendor and we have to perform the activity on the uh, zebra fish like as the plant name is jeevak and all these things so for the alzheimer disease even that we can easily see the heartbeat of that zebra fish mice so some heart diseases model can also be performed on the zebra fish but here for that purpose you have to take the permission from the cpcca protocol for the zebra fish and uh, perform the various activities the frog uh, that is called as the rana tigrina uh, so previously from 100 years ago this uh, Uh, 100 years this is a animal is your uh, frog is used uh, to check the this uh, neurotransmitter of acetylcholine and your pg student ug students can also perform this uh, model but right now uh, these are banned in each college but for a phd or for a research purposes higher research purposes that can be used uh, which gives a proper <coughs> study on the cns heart and neuromuscular junction even that chicken can be also used so why here i have mentioned this chicken here so chicken can be preferably used for the anti emetic activity so copper sulfate solution has been given to the animals and animal starts to the vomiting and uh, before that we have to give your drug and check whether your drug have produces the anti emetic property or not for that purpose chickens are widely used even that it is a good model for the toxicology and pharmacology behavioral studies 
but in our areas in our uh, uh, thing uh, we are not using the more chicken but there is no need of any legal uh, thing for the chicken here we are using the chicken ileum where for the performing the various biases of the acetylcholine and all these things pigeon is also used uh, for the uh, studies for the anti emetic and as well as standardization of the cardiac glycosides okay and even biase of prolactin then uh, intravenous anesthetics whether that anti anesthetic iv is a performed very good role or not that can be purposes the pigeon is a mostly preferred uh, animal okay so overall here we have checked the various animals rat mouse rabbit cow horse pig dog cat in various research purposes various models and these are the one of the best thing that we have seen uh, to to the uh, various research activity now after completion of the basic information of the animals in a different area now next part is start that is the handling of the animal handling so most of the time uh, it is a handle with confidence and relaxed manner so animals should feel a stress free in your hand then and then you can perform the activity if you are performing the anxiety activity and if you are handling not in a proper way then what happens the your, your result you will not get the proper result in that animals okay so practice is the most important with this practice you have to ha handle the animal in a very well manner in a systematic manner uh, then uh, you have to use the platform that is not a slippery uh, the animal is a very well uh, proper handle so so various methods are used to handle the animal because uh, each and every method different method can be use the comfortness to the animal and animal can feel free in the in this manner so here you have to see that how the animals are handled in a various manner on the neck region you have to grab the animal and pick up the animal and uh, you have to see here here is the i have shown you uh, look at here there is the grab the neck region and uh, you have to give on the dose to the animal but uh, these things you have to follow only for the 10 to 15 seconds afterwards suffocation may be occurs and animal death is occurs in your hand so practice is the most important and at that time you have to give on the proper even big animals like as the gerbil then rabbits uh, then guinea pigs that can be handled in this way so animals can feel their comfort and in your hands and they can uh, respond uh, the sample or drug which is given to them after handling of the animals in a very well manner next we have to concentrate on the point that is the root of administration how the drug is given to the animal in a different manner okay uh, yesterday i talked with the one of the animal uh, ayurvedic physicians regarding about the dose Uh, so most of the times in ayurveda the drugs are available in the form of different forms that is the vatis oils and all uh, alvela uh, avilia okay so these drugs can triturate in a uh, uh, triturate make a powder and then it is given to the different roots okay so most preferably we are using the oral roots for the uh, ayurvedic preparation because it is easy to give on and it is a convenient cheapest then it is a safe acceptable and you will get result after one hour after oral root administration in the animal if you given the dose by iv root you will get the result after the uh, half an hour and if it is given by the subcutaneous root then you will get the result after 15 minutes so with this considering time we have choose the roots and we have given the drug in a proper way to the animals let us see here we have given the dose to the animals by orally to the rats mice uh, then uh, for, uh, dog okay so with the calm and with a proper handling then you have to give the dose to the uh, rat and mouse in a very well manner okay so for that purpose you have to see here the needles which is available in the veterinary shop that is the 20 to 24 gauze or 16 to 20 gauze needles for the rat 
okay and uh, these needles are made up of the stainless steel and in front of the teeth is a very smooth and that is not disturb the stomach of that animal and these teeth or these needles can be easily insert into the mouth of the uh, uh, mouse and rat and give the dose in a proper way previously we are using this red rubber feeding tube for the rat but it creates more problems because uh, rat can bite to this rubber tube and not easily give the dose but right now this stainless steel tube can be used for the giving the dose to the animals now here we are going to see the parental roots in which different parental roots are given like as the intramuscular injections intravenous intraperitoneal intradermal subcutaneous roots so these roots can be also preferred to inject the drug in the animal model okay so the important thing is that whenever you use the, these drugs in the animal model at that time precautions are most important taken okay so these inject of the drug into this model uh, in a proper way that purpose skills are required okay whenever the drugs are given by parental route it creates the painful by intraperitoneal route intravenous route okay and sometimes it requires the skill person so it is very expensive and it is a very less step because of the you are inject the injection into their uh, body that creates the sepsis uh, creates the problem like as a sepsis let us see one by one the location of that site where we can do the drug to the animals here you have to see the intramuscular route in that intramuscular route you have to uh, two persons are required one person can hold the animal in a proper way and on that muscle site you can inject the drug in a animals but the volume should be uh, is the most important in that animal because here you have to see there is the cytokine nerve is also there if if you inject the drug in the thigh and it is a uh, touch to the cytokine nerve so animal may get the paralysis so that precaution is the most important whenever you give the drug to the intramuscular okay so oily preparations can be also given here oily drug and slow releasing drug can be also given by these roots after intramuscular you have to see that is the intravenous so in the intravenous you have to uh, restrain the animal in the cage in a proper way clean the tail with the ethanol so uh, what happens then uh, the veins are the dilate and that vein can be easily observed by naked eye and afterward by skillfully you have to inject the needle into the vein and slowly drug is uh, given by the iv route okay then uh, intraperitoneal route means in abdominal cavity the drugs are given here we have to make the needle insertion at the 30 degree angle that is the most important and most important thing whenever you have to inject the drug just pull back and check whether it is a properly injected or not otherwise sometimes the drug can be injected into the kidney drug can be injected into the uh, intestine drug can be injected into the stomach liver so these precautions should be take care whenever you have to perform the intraperitoneal activity intradermally so whenever you have to check when any drug can uh, what kind of effect is produces on the dermal at that time uh, pull the skin in a proper way and inject the drug uh, simply into the dermal site so here blebo formation is offered means whether your compound is a, whether your drug is a properly released at that site that can be you have to see here then subcutaneous in the subcutaneous uh it is the most important just pull up the skin in a proper way and uh, in between the skin you have to just inject the needle in a proper way that is a hypodermic uh, needle and we have to see the our drug is a very well manner uh, uh very well uh, injected by the subcutaneous route okay so most of the time here precaution can be taken that is the sometimes needle can be enter into the finger also that may be create the injury sometimes you have to inject the needle here and that needle comes out from this side and the dose is uh, goes not proper way so that precaution should be take care of the uh, when you whenever the given by the subcutaneous inhalation when you see the here inhalation 
so this is the one of the um, um, part, uh, this is the apparatus where you can keep the animal properly and the flow of your drug is given here and animal can be easily uh, inhale the drug by their nostrils okay so this apparatus mostly preferable for the anti tubercular activity uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria can be input here and this bacteria can inhale by the rat and that bacteria is deposited into their lungs and develop the uh, tuberculosis and uh, afterwards you have to give your drugs to the animal uh, that is the anti tubercular drug and then you have to kill the animals and remove the lungs and just uh, develop the uh, bacterial culture on the plate and check what kind of the uh, what kind of your drugs has shown the activity on the anti tubercular or not okay i have tried uh, this uh, uh, model in our laboratory but it is very difficult because this apparatus is the most important and you are handling the tuberculosis it is also very dangerous that's why still we are uh, waiting for that apparatus now next important thing is whenever you have been given the drug to the animal proper handling proper injecting now next part is the analysis so in the analysis most important that is the blood is required okay sometimes it requires more quantity sometimes it requires a very small quantity so for that purpose so um, general methods are preferable for the blood collection so here the blood collection are again carried out by the two ways by anesthetize the animal and collect the blood and without anesthetic collect the blood here dorsal pedal vein for the rat and mice and cephalous vein for rat and mice these two veins are preferably to collect the blood for the without anesthesia so pedal means uh, legs on the dorsal side of the leg pau uh, edema pau uh, in the local uh, region of the pau just pin uh, the lancet and you will get the one drop of the blood and that can be sufficient for to check the blood glucose level but the anesthesia general anesthesia or local anesthesia is required when the blood if you want to take the blood from the tail vein tail snip orbital sinus from the eye jugular vein temporary cannula blood vessel cannulation tarsal veins marginal ear veins from the rabbit for that purpose anesthesia is the most important and one more method is a, to collect the blood that is the terminal procedure terminal procedure means nothing but that is the cardiac puncture you just afterwards if you want to kill the animal before that you have to uh, puncture the cardiac and collect the blood from the cardiac even that for the posterior vena cava you will get more amount of the blood and uh, afterwards you have to terminate the animals or death of the animal is carried out okay uh, just see the how the pedal vein is used to collect the blood sample very small quantity of the blood sample is available uh, from the pedal cavity so here tail vein is used by injecting the needle proper in a iv uh, and collect the blood sample here that is the tail snip snail means from the tip of the tail you have to just cut and you will get the one drop or two drop that are sufficient for the check the uh, ogtt uh, anti diabetic activity ogtt means oral glucose tolerance test sometimes uh, allogen induced then sometimes streptococcin induced for that model purpose you have to uh, blood glucose uh, measurement is the most important and for that purpose this method is a suitable if you want more amount of the blood so for that purpose orbital sinus can be preferred just take a uh, needle sorry not a needle it is a glass capillary and that capillary just inject the eye and collect the blood sample and after collection of blood sample you have to put the cotton on the eye and healing of that uh, ruptured vein is a uh, occur so from the rabbit from the marginal vein you can collect the blood sample and uh, for that purpose you have to check the uh, another studies that is a pkpd study for that purpose cardiovascular puncture where you can just inject the uh, needle into the cardiac and collect the blood sample for your study it sometimes if you have more skill the animal cannot be die uh, after withdrawal of the blood from the cardiac puncture anesthesia there are different kinds of anesthesia are used in the animal uh, by using the Uh, injection or inhalation there are different drugs that is the barbiturates chlorhydrate ketamine urethane so urethane nowadays we are using here to the <coughs> anesthesia chloroform strictly banned 
that is not used <coughs> for anesthesia but dietary ether that is anesthetic ether that can be used for the anesthesia okay so co2 chamber is the most preferable or even that on one of the bucket can be used a uh, place uh, take the cotton deep into the dietary ether put into the bucket and close the bucket saturate the air and then keep the animal inside that bucket so this is also one of the technique for the inhalation anesthesia okay then after anesthesia uh, you have know that uh, after anesthesia you have to carry out the various experiments on the animals in a uh, long period okay afterwards euthanasia is the uh, most important it means that the painless inducement of the quick death by using the physical or chemical methods so here physical method that are the stunning electrical stunning stunning with the captive bolt then cervical dislocation decapitation microwave eradication okay concussion so different physical methods are used but <clears throat> in our uh, areas or we are using mostly cervical dislocation method for the killing of the back uh, killing of the animals chemical methods are also preferred so uh, chamber co2 chambers are preferred and co2 is a very uh, easily kill to the animal painlessly by using even that anesthetics are given by over overdose and that can be also causes the death of the animals so here the picture that is the cervical dislocation where you can uh, disconnect the spinal cord to the uh, remaining part of the body and you, uh, you will get that result <coughs> okay here is the co2 tank is there that co2 tank can be uh, uh, kill the animals place the lid and uh, you have to do the painless uh, killing to the animals okay so uh, methods not used for the animals that are the rapid freezing is also not used for the killing the animals aspect there is not hyper the high temperature is not given and kill to the animal okay pitting is also not suitable by using the various chemical like the chloroform magnesium sulfate nicotine trichloroethane that can cannot be used to kill the an, uh, animals so mostly recommended that the capture cervical dislocation and some chemical uh, co2 uh, then chemical like the ketamine uh, higher anesthetic agents that is are the recommended for the killing of the animals so most important thing that are the five freedom things that is the brambell five freedom uh just minute uh, just one minute i will take break to water and i will start again just minute okay sorry for interruption uh, are you able to hear my voice yes sir yes sir okay thank you thank you very much uh five freedoms are mostly preferred uh, so, so what are these five freedoms that are originally developed uh, from uk government uh, for the livestock husbandry and in 90 uh, sorry in 1965 that by the professor roger brambell and 
then by farm animal welfare council in july 1979 so what are these five freedoms so these are the nothing but that is the freedom from the hunger and thirst of each animal so animal should be should not feel any discomfort it should be freedom from the discomfort freedom from pain injury and disease then freedom from uh, express their uh, normal behavior of the animal and freedom from fear and distress so sometimes we are using the various animal models at that time pain are mostly carried out by injection by some models so the causes of pain and distress there are repeated use of large volumes of intradermal injection like at the front complete adjoint uh, in arthritis model we are using this cfa so that are not be uh, repeated because it creates the more problems because it creates the arthritis in the animal then intra peritoneal uh, implantation of ascites producing hybridoma for monoclonal antibody production that is not preferable it creates more pain in the animal okay if you have restrained the animal uh, uh, hold the animals for the more than one hour that is also creates more pain and that is also not uh, preferable malignant neoplasm uh, if there is the uh, tumor is there and if it is the more tumor and there is a propagating all over the body that is also not tolerable then prolonged food and water restriction that is also not preferable distal tail biopsy in the animals over 3 weeks of the age that is the tail sniffing that is also not preferable so these are some things that are uh, create the more pain and animals Uh, like as the inflammatory diseases, then organ failure, then non-healing skin lesions, whole body irritations of the high doses. Okay, then withdrawal of the more than ten percent of the animal blood volume that are not preferable. It creates more pain. You have to perform the experiment on the animals in a very well manner. But uh, <clears throat> keep this point in your mind. So animals should not be have more uh, problem. and uh, without any problem you have to complete your task okay next we come to the point that is the human dose to the animal dose we know that human dose ayurvedic uh, dose to the animal uh, two times in a day three times in a day so how to calculate for the animal so this is one of the small formula has given here that is the human dose divided by 60 that that is the weight of the human into 6.70 that is the uh, factor and you will get the animal dose for the rat so for the another animal so this chart is mostly preferable for the human so here their factor is there so formula is the same uh, human dose divided by 60 into factor so you have to change here factor according to the animal if you are using the mouse then multiply the factor that is a 12.3 if you are using the rat multiply with the 6.2 if you are using the uh, rabbit uh, for the your study and human dose you know very well so for that purpose we have to multiply with the 3.1 and you will get the rabbit dose from the uh, animal okay clear so this is the human dose to the animal dose this is a chart this is useful to the dose conversion between the animals and humans now next most important part in the uh, uh, ayurvedic preparation that is to check the toxicity study so whenever we are going to perform the toxicity study in the animal we are using the guidelines and that guidelines are nothing but that is the oecd guidelines that is the organization for the economic cooperation and development so these oecd has given the guidelines in the number form that is the 402 for the acute dermal toxicity 4052 to acute eye irritation test 4425 to acute oral toxicity study so for a different uh, parameters like as the skin sensitization dermal toxicity ocular toxicity inhalation toxicity oral toxicity so different guidelines are available on the uh, google uh, if you have to just search the oecd guideline for 402 oecd guideline for the 408 you will get the two to three pages and that are given the uh, detailed procedure of the toxicity study even that neurotoxicity study carcinogenicity study developmental toxicity study reproduction toxicity genotoxicity study that also you will get the various methods or procedure uh, for the study of this uh, guidelines okay so just we see the one test here that is the limit test mostly we are using for the extract uh, uh, extract purpose so here we are using the 2000 mg per kg highest dose uh, 
uh, extract, which is given orally at a single time to the rat and just observe for the 14 days if there is any uh, uh, death occurs or not. If there is no any death occurs, then we have to take the one tenth of the dose for the therapeutic activity. So LD50 is a greater than the limit dose. So 200 mg per kg and uh, highest dose that is the 400 milligram per kg that we are prefer here on the basis of this limit test. Apart from that, we are using the histopathological study. We are check the various enzymes from the blood sample, whether they are increases or decreases. We are using check the urea level, whether that your uh, extract has a, uh, create the problem on the kidney or not. Then blood parameters, HB, CBC, uh, WBC, RBC, uh, whether that your compound has produces any toxic effect on the uh, <coughs> body or not. So these are the various parameters are we are going to check under the limit test. And afterwards, if there is no any death, if there is no any change occurs in these various parameters, then we can say that your drug is a safe drug for a further study. Okay, so this is the related towards the toxicity study. Uh, in our laboratory, we are using the brine shrimp lethality assay. Brine shrimp lethality assay is nothing but that is the brine shrimps which are available, which is hacked by using the eggs in the chamber. And we have to check whether your compound has uh, produces any toxicity or not. Sometimes what happens, uh, very small amount of drug is available with the students or professors. And that professors are not able to uh, give the more quantity of drug. And that drug uh, wants to check whether it is a toxic or not. So for that purpose, we are using this brine shrimp lethality assay. And that can be helpful to get the LC50, means lethal concentration, such a concentration which kills 50% of napoli. When you hatch the drug uh, into the chamber, so in this chamber, you have to see the naked uh, by your naked eyes, the very small napula, and that napula you have to take it into the test tube and uh, you have to uh, count the 10 napula and place into the test tube and check whether what kind of effect is occurred. Okay, so LC50 you will get here. Then <clears throat> here, analgesic activity. So most of the Ayurvedic preparations, Ayurvedic drugs, can be used to check whether your compound has analgesic activity or not. So for that purpose, we are using here a hot plate. So make the temperature 55 degrees Celsius and place the animal on this hot plate and check power licking response or jumping response, whichever earlier occurs. And you have to mention on the record and afterwards uh, you have to get the result. But here most important thing, uh, 15 seconds is a cutoff time. So after 15 seconds, immediately you have to remove the animal from the panel. Otherwise, uh, it will damage their paws, uh, it will damage their nerve system, and you will not get the proper result further. So 15 seconds is the cutoff time uh, in the analgesic activity. So here, one interesting thing is that uh, you have to make the group. Uh, now we are going to study the different models. So in that model, you have to make the group. One group is a uh, control group. You have to just... Uh, place the animals with the normal saline, given the animal with the normal saline. Second group, six animals that we have to give the standard drug, more diclofenac sodium, whatever the marketed drug is available. And third group, uh, six animals, where you can give your extracts. So after drug extraction is given to the animal and check uh, what kind of the effect gets on the, it is hot plate. Normally what happens when you place the animal, normal animals, okay, five to seven seconds, immediately start to the jump. And when you give your drug sample, it shows the 13 to 14 seconds. So increase in the time threshold, that is a six seconds to uh, 14 seconds, that indicate your drug has analgesic activity. And this model, there are n number of models are available, but uh, just I have taken one model for your uh, knowledge purpose. Second model that is the anti-inflammatory activity. So here uh, you have seen there is the instrument that is called as the plethysmometer. Okay, so here uh, power volume means you have inflammation is produced by the uh, various chemicals like as a carrageenan, uh, like as a mustard, like as a albumin, and uh, this carrageenan one percent inject 
into the pouch of that animal and once it is the inflammation occur you have to put into the tube just look at here here tubes are there and uh, otherwise if this instrument is not available then we have to use the vernier caliper and measure the uh, size of that pouch and you will get whether your drug have shown the anti inflammatory activity or not anti pyretic activity so this is the telethermometer instrument a uh, very simple uh, marketed uh, yeast is available brewer sister baker sister sorry baker sister it is called as a brewer sister so from the bakery you have to take this baker sister and make a suspension and inject subcutaneously to the animals and you have to uh, check the temperature is occurs or not by using the thermometer and that thermometer or this is the telethermometer inject into the uh, rectum of that animal and if there is a temperature is high then we consider this is the antibiotic activity so anti diabetic activity there are in vivo models in vitro models are there alloxone inducer streptozoticin there are n number of models are available in the anti diabetic so this streptozoticin is given to the animal rat or mice it starts to kill the damage to the beta cells and then after insulin is not released and insulin is not control the glucose and you will get the Uh, diabetes model in the animals okay so uh, non insulin diabetes dependent diabetes models and insulin dependent diabetes models are available even that in vitro model also occur not necessary to use the any animal by taking the enzymes in the test tubes and you have to check whether your compound is a uh, tox uh, anti diabetic or not okay uh, next one that is the hepato uh, uh, protective activity so hepatoprotein nowadays uh, i always uh, told to the students about that there is no drug such drugs available which are uh, helpful to cure the liver problems only silimarin drug that is also ayurvedic drug is available in the market and uh, that good but another drugs are not available so there is a highest demand of that uh, hepatoprotein because of the, the problems of that is hepato hepatitis a hepatitis b hepatitis c there are uh, then jaundice uh, these are the symptoms of the hepatitis so for that purpose the models are available in the uh, books that we are using in the laboratory so we are prefer the model that is the rifampicin that is anti tubercular drug rifampicin isolated induced hepatotoxicity 1 gram of this drugs are given to the 8 days and after 8 days the animals uh, livers are damages you have to take the blood sample and check the hgot hgpt level and if it is a high level is occur so that indicate that animals have hepatotoxicity even that paracetamol is also used to liver damage thiacetamide chemicals is used to necrosis the liver galactosamine it is used to the necrosis the liver carbon tetrachloride is also used to the liver fibrosis so make a same group like the control standard test group induce the drug uh, damage the liver and then we have to give your sample and check uh, the histopathologically as well as the parameters like as the hgot hgpt level in the animals whether your drug have produces hepatoprotective activity or not here sometimes hepatoprotective is there and sometimes hepato curative model is also there anti conversion so fits occurs in the human body it is a granular as well as petitimal so granular type of fits a uh, granular type of conversions granular types of seizures can be produced by this model that is a electroconvulsometer so in a rat uh, you have to give the current to the uh, rat uh, in the ear that is 150 milliampere point per second and you will get the uh, such a observation like as the flick down extension clonus and stupor in the animal afterwards you have to give your drugs to the animal if you given by the oral route then wait for one hours and after again give the current and you have to observe that this extension phase is absence is occurs if this phase is not occur animal feel free a normal uh, behavior then we can say that this is the anti conversion property of that drug okay uh, then uh, next model is anti ulcer model uh, most of the times uh, there are so many drugs are available in the market but ayurvedic drugs are highest uh, Uh, requirement for the anti ulcer drug because uh, whatever the drug synthetic drugs are available in, in the market that create the more more problems in the human body uh, that's why 
even pain killer also produces ulcer so here we are using the pain killers the for the producing the model uh, ethanol induced the model diclofenac uh, aspirin induced the model histamine induced the model so acetic acid induced the gastric ulcer so these are the different drug induced the model uh, in the uh, um, uh, in the rat or in the mice and here more majorly pylorus ligation rat is used so just bind to the pylorus and after 18 hours uh, in that stomach ulcer Uh, formation occurs due to the accumulation of the acid and you have to given the drug here you have to see that there is the redness is occurs inside the stomach so that indicates there is the uh, bleeding or redness is that indicates there is the ulcer formation is occur and whatever the drugs that are not produces any lesion into the stomach so that indicate that drug have produces the anti ulcer property okay the antioxidant nowadays uh, oxidation has create the more more Problem free radicals create the neuro uh, neuronal problems, diabetes, Alzheimer, Parkinson, uh, then cardiovascular. So all these created by the free radicals, and here we are overcome by using the antioxidant activity. And antioxidant activity is carried out by using the uh, uh, in vitro by using a small kit. And here you have see the free radicals. Uh, that is the DPPH is a chemicals which have purple color. And when you use the antioxidant. drug that can be used as a uh, change the color or that indicate your drug have a anti oxidant property uh, hiv uh, also model we have the developed in vitro not in vivo by using the pt tube but because that the chemicals have a highly cost so this is a very simple model that is a pepsin which uh, have similar to the hiv1 protease and hiv1 protease is enzyme which play important role in the maturation of the virus if you block the pepsin so what indicate your drug is also blocked to the hiv1 protease and hiv1 protease maturation of the virus is occur so that is not occur and hiv anti hiv property you can check in the uh, uh, laboratory level by this using so here some references are given that are useful for your future study that is oecd guidelines okay and thank you very much for your kind attention uh, to the loknete rajaram bapu patil ayurvedic medical college hospitals and pg institute and research center islampur and also thankful to the dr pramodini sohuli patil madam principal all faculties and team of entire uh, college team uh, for their support and all the things uh, i am again thank thankful that this college because uh, many students have visited to our lab and performed the various activities here Uh, day by day ayurveda is a more precise and very uh, the delightful area people aware more about the uh, ayurvedas and people are travel towards us uh, towards us so our way is that the more and more activities performed and more and more drug can be precise so for that purpose reverse pharmacology is one of the subject is there and in that reverse pharmacology uh, we are precise previously we said that this extract can be useful in a different diseases but nowadays we said that this extract is only used for the arthritis this extract is only for the uh, gastric ulceration this extract is only for the piles uh, this extract is only useful for the cardiovascular purposes so this reverse pharmacology is also in uh, uh, emerging in future uh, for the development of the various ayurvedic drugs thank you thank you very much if you have any queries uh, you can feel feel free to ask Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your wonderful lecture. Now I would like to invite Dr. Joshna Kalyan, Professor, Department of Pharmacy Shastra and Vegetable, uh, LRP Ayurved Medical College, Islampur, on this platform to for expert opinion and conclude the session. Mm. Thank you. uh thank you dr sandeep patel sir delivered very informative lecture on pre clinical approach towards the analysis of ayurvedic formulation uh, concepts like uh, like selection of animal for experimental use then handling of animal route of drug administration analysis 
in analysis blood collection anesthesia etc etc uh, killing of animal and then toxicity studies uh, especially lc50 concentration uh, are very well explained by you sir uh, this lecture is definitely useful for participants in their research education and practice also thank you again sir thank you everyone thank you very much
Because of some technical problem, Dr. Shiva sir will not be able to continue the session. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, feedback form link is pinned in YouTube chat box. Kindly fill the fill uh, the feedback form and submit to get the e certificate. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Dr. Manali Patil, Madam, Associate Professor, for vote of thanks. Department of Rasastra Vesaja Kalpana, Loknagi Rajaram of Patil Ayurvedic Medical College, Hospital, PG Institute, and Research Center Islampur has arranged the national webinar on guidance on practice of pre clinical animal study with special reference to Ayurvedic formulation. On behalf of our institute and Department of Rasastra and Vesaja Kalpana, a big thank to today's eminent speaker, Dr. Madhukar Shevai and Dr. Sandeep Patil sir. I would like to appreciate both of you for offering your services and this year's time to deliver lecture in the webinar. The institute and our department appreciate your work and seek the same from you in future. Thank you, sir. I also extend my thanks to Sri Nishikant Bhosle Pati, Dada, founder of Prakash Ikshan Mandar, Islampur, for their valuable support and guidance. We are thankful of our chairman, Sri Sanjay Gadav, sir, secretary, Sri Nitin Patil, sir, and director, Sanjay Gadav, sir, for their support. Our department is very much thankful of respected Dean, sir, Dr. Virendra Vinkire, for their timely guidance and enormous co cooperation in organizing the webinar. Our department is greatly thankful for, for PG director, Dr. Pramod Kanap, sir, PhD Director Dr. Ajit Patil sir for their guidance and help. We are deeply grateful and thankful of all the faculty of our institute and other institutes for their active participation in the webinar. Thank you very much all PGs and UD students for their active participation in the webinar. We are fortunate enough to back by the team of motivated and dedicated ICTC department Dr. Ajit Patil sir and Mr. Shailesh Katkar sir for their hard work and valuable work. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Uh, please uh, send your feedback. Sorry. Feedback link is pinched in YouTube chat box. After submission of your feedback form, e-certificate will be issued by sir. Uh, uh, yes. Automatically. Yes. Automatically. Uh, 